she said, I just want to tell you something that's very, very important about Jesus, okay? Amen? Okay, there are a lot of beliefs about Jesus Christ, about who he is, about what he did. But I just want to teach you the one thing that you need to believe about Jesus to go to heaven, okay? Do you want to go to heaven? Yes! Okay, so pay very close attention, okay? Okay, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 23, the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says we are all sinners. A sin is when we break one of God's commandments. Lying is a sin, stealing is a sin, and the Bible says, for all have sinned, okay? So I'm a sinner, you're a sinner, everyone's a sinner, okay? Now, the Bible says that there is a payment for our sins, or something that we deserve for our sins. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, okay? That means because we're sinners, we all deserve death. But that death is not talking about a physical death. It's talking about a spiritual death, okay? In Revelation, the Bible tells us about the second death. In Revelation, the Bible says that all liars shall help their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, okay? So, when the Bible says the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, is that talking about heaven or hell? Yeah. Hell, exactly. It's talking about hell. And it says all liars, okay? Now, I know I've lied before. I'm sure you've all lied before. Everyone has lied before. So, what God is saying is that we all deserve to go to hell. Now, it doesn't mean that we all are going to go to hell. It just means that we all deserve to go to hell because we've all sinned. But obviously God loves us. Do you think God wants us to go to hell? No. no. He loves us. He doesn't want us to go to hell. Because the people that go to hell, they burn forever and ever. Now, God loves you. He doesn't want you to go there. I don't even know you, and I don't want you to go there, okay? That's just the bad news. We all deserve hell for our sins. But the good news is that you still can go to heaven, okay? Even though we're all sinners, you still can go to heaven, okay? Now, the good news, the, good, the second part of the verse says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible says that going to heaven is a gift, okay? And who paid for that gift? God, or who else? Jesus. Jesus, amen? Amen. Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. The Bible says that God was manifested in the flesh. But that means God became a man, and that man was Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ lived a perfect life. He never sinned because he was God. And he also did a lot of miracles. He walked on the water, he turned water into wine, he multiplied the food, he rose Lazarus to the dead. He did a lot of miracles because he was God. But you know, some of the people, they did not like him. They did not like Jesus, so they lied on him, they beat him, they spit on him, they put a crown of thorns on his head. And how did Jesus die? You all can see the answer. Exactly. He died on your cross. He got crucified, okay? And Jesus Christ, when Jesus was on the cross, the Bible says that he himself bare our sins in his own body on the tree. So that means all of your sins and all of my sins and the sins of the whole world, the sins of the past, the present, and the future was placed on Jesus Christ when he was on the cross, okay? And Jesus Christ, he died and he paid for our sins, okay? Now, Jesus was dead for three days and three nights, and then what happened? He rose again. You can say the answer, okay? He rose again. He came back to life. He resurrected, okay? Now, do you believe that Jesus Christ died for some sins, or did he die for all sins? All sins. All sins. And did he die for some people, or did he die for everybody? He died for everybody. Everybody, amen? Amen. Now, even though he died for everybody, does that mean that everybody automatically goes to heaven? No. So, the Bible says that there's one thing you must do to go to heaven. 
There's not many things that you have to do. There's only one thing that you have to do. And it's very easy, okay? Now, there's a story in the Bible that tells us. There's a story about a man, and this man thought he was about to die. And he did not want to go to hell to burn forever and ever, okay? He wanted to go to heaven to be with God. So, this man goes to Jesus Christ, and he asks him the very simple question. He asks, what must I do to be saved? He's asking, what is the one thing I must do to be saved from hell and go to heaven? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Okay? So according to the Bible, the one thing you must do to go to heaven, it says you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Say believe on Jesus. Believe on Jesus. Amen. Okay. Now when it says believe on Jesus, it doesn't mean that you just believe that he exists or that he was real. It means that you have to put all your faith and all your trust in what he did to save you. Meaning that you cannot trust in yourself. You cannot trust in your good works. You cannot trust in your church. You cannot trust in how much you keep the commandments or how much you repent of your sins or how good of a life you live. You must trust in what Jesus Christ did to save you and not in yourself and not in your good works. Okay? So, if someone says that I'm going to heaven because I live a good life, I go to church, and I'm a good person, are they trusting Jesus or are they trusting in themselves? Exactly. If anyone thinks that they're going to heaven because they're good, or they keep the commandments, or they live a good life, they're not trusting what Jesus Christ did, they're trusting in themselves. And if anyone who's trusting in themselves, they're going to go to hell. Because you must believe or trust in Jesus Christ and what he did to save you, okay? Even the most famous verse in the Bible says, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life or eternal life. So the Bible says the one thing you must do to have eternal life or everlasting life is you must believe in Jesus, or trust in Jesus, or faith in Jesus. They all mean the same thing. Believe, faith, trust in Jesus Christ, okay? Now, the Bible says that the gift of God is eternal life. That means it's a free gift. You don't have to work for it. If I bought you this Bible as a gift, and I told you, you have to give me a hundred dollars, is that a gift? No, it's not a gift, right? If I bought you this Bible as a gift, and then I told you, you have to come clean my car. Is that a gift? No, it's not a gift. Because if you have to work for it or pay for it, then it's not a gift. But the Bible says that going to heaven, it is a free gift. You don't have to work for it, and you don't have to pay for it. What's the one thing you must do to go to heaven? Say it. Exactly. Do you have to do anything else? No. No, because it's a free gift, okay? Now, um, the Bible says that the gift of God is eternal life, okay? So what does the word eternal mean? Everlasting. Is there another word? What, another word for everlasting or eternal? <laughs> well, another word would be forever, okay? Yes, forever. Everlasting, eternal, forever. They mean the same thing. So, the Bible says that the gift of God is eternal life, meaning that it's forever. So once God gives it to you, it's yours forever. Okay? And the Bible says, in hope of eternal life, which God... Pay attention, pay attention. The Bible says, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Okay? So, the free gift of eternal life, God promised it, okay? And it says that you cannot lie, okay? So, once God gives you the gift of eternal life, once you believe in Jesus and He gives you eternal life, He gives it to you forever. Because the Bible says that God cannot lie. He will never take it back, okay? Because it's forever, it's eternal. Now, here's the important part, so pay attention, okay? Once you believe in Jesus, God gives you eternal life. And it's yours forever. You will never lose it. You will never take it back, no matter what. But 
if you sin and if you break the commandments after you're saved, God will punish you. The Bible says, whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth it and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So if you're saved, if you have eternal life, and if you commit sins, if you break the commandments, God will punish you. But he will only punish you here on earth. He will never send you to hell because going to heaven is a free gift and he promised you to go to heaven once you believe. So if you're saved, you're saved forever. And if you sin, God will punish you only here on earth. But when you die, you still go to heaven because you're saved forever. Okay? I'll, I'll answer your question when I finish, okay? So once you're saved, how long are you saved for? Forever. And how many times do you have to get saved? One time. How many times do you have to trust in Jesus as your Savior? One time. And how long does he save you for? Exactly. Now, I'll give you an example, okay? So, pay attention. I'll give you an example. Take me for example. I'm saved. I have eternal life, okay? Let's say five years from now, I did something very bad. Like, I committed a murder. God spit, okay? God will punish me. And they get a disease, and they get in a car accident, and they go to prison, or God may even give me the death penalty. I may die physically, but when I die, where will I go? Will I go to heaven or hell? <laughs> Who says heaven? Who says heaven? Who says hell? Okay. Remember, I would go to heaven because Jesus Christ died for all my sins. That means little sins like lying and big sins like murder and even suicide, Jesus Christ paid for all sins. Your past sins and your future sins. Little sins and big sins. Okay? And once God saves you, how long does he save you for? Forever. Okay? So I'll give you a harder example. Okay? What if God saves someone today Okay? You paying attention? Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen? Yes. Okay. What if, take me for example. Let's say I have eternal life. Okay? I'm saved. I have eternal life. What if five years from now I did something very, very bad? Like I committed a murder and then I committed suicide. God forbid. I kill myself. Would I go to heaven or hell? Who says heaven? Who says hell? Okay, remember, I would still go to heaven. Because once you're saved, you're saved forever. Remember? And what's the one thing you must do to go to heaven? Can your good work save you? Can going to church save you? No, just believing in Jesus saves you. Now, it's good to go to church. It's good to do good works. It's good to keep the commandments. It's good to be a good person. But doing those things cannot save hell. Only believing and trusting in Jesus can save you from hell. Okay? So this is the last part, okay? And this is how you make the decision to be saved. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 10, it says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So if you truly believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died and paid for your sins and rose again three days later, if you believe that in your heart, and if you tell God that with your mouth, the Bible says that you will be saved, okay? So just a quick review. Because we're sinners, we all deserve to go to hell. But how did Jesus Christ save us? What did Jesus do to save us? Say the answer. He died on the cross. And what happened three days later? Exactly. And what's the one thing you must do to go to heaven? Exactly. Do you have to do anything else? No. Oh, because of some free gift, okay? So if Jesus Christ was standing right here today, and you told him that you believe in him, you trust him, and you ask him to save you, do you believe you would save him? Yes, of course, because he loves you. He doesn't want you to go to hell. So if you ask Jesus to save you, he would save you. And if he saves you today, how long would you be saved for? Forever. 
What if he saves you today, and five years from now you did something very bad? Like, God forbid, you committed a murder. What would God do? He would punish you here on earth. But well, where will you go when you die? Heaven. Heaven, because you're already saved forever, okay? So obviously don't do that, okay? God wants you to keep the commandments, but if you do sin, God will punish you, but you will still go to heaven. And if you do good things after you're saved, God will bless you. If you keep the commandments after you're saved, God will bless you and make sure you have a better life. But once you're saved, you're saved forever, okay? So if you believe that, and if you want to ask God to save you, I'm going to say a prayer, okay? Because telling me that you believe that does not save you, okay? You have to tell God that you believe, okay? So the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 13, the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It says whosoever, okay? So, pay attention. Pay attention. So, if you want to be saved, if you want to ask Jesus to save you and give you eternal life, I just want to help you tell God you believe that, okay? So if you believe that, just bow your head and close your eyes and repeat after me, okay? But you're talking to God, okay? So let's pray. Bow your head, close your eyes, and repeat after me. I'm going to pray to God, okay? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know I deserve help, but I believe that Jesus died for me and paid for all my sins and rose again. Please save me and give me eternal life. I'm only trusting you. Yes. 